What's up team, how's it going? Welcome back to Combat Ready HQ. Welcome to today's newest video. We are checking out the British all-terrain armoured vehicle that shocked the world. I don't know whether it shocked the world, but we will see what they've got to say about it. I know it's a great vehicle that has been used for the Royal Marines for a very long time, but before we get into it, make sure you always check out the original video in the description. Grab your coffee, you can get Combat Ready coffee from our website below. Check out our free Discord, join the community, check us out on Instagram, and as always, please like, share, subscribe, and comment below with what your thoughts are, what you want to see next, but let's get into it. When it comes to amphibious troop transportation, the collaboration between the UK and Sweden to produce the Viking can't be overlooked. This vehicle, also known as the BVS-10, is a highly versatile, highly mobile transporter designed to navigate the world's most difficult terrain while protecting its cargo. Let's take a closer look at what makes this vehicle so mobile and ready for battle. But before we get started, if you enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get more sent straight to your notifications. The BVS-10 Viking is a fully amphibious, all-terrain, tracked, armored vehicle designed and manufactured by the British company BAE Systems in a collaborative effort with the Swedish company Land Systems Hoglands. This vehicle is a further development of the smaller BV-206S with improved load capacity based on the knowledge from more than 25 years of articulated vehicle design and production. Before that. they could be launched on the battlefield, the Vikings needed significant testing to prove it was ready for all climates. The first prototypes were delivered to the British Army in June of 2001. Okay, so June, June 2001 when these uh, prototypes were issued. So that was just obviously as Afghan and then the Iraq war kicked off with 9-11, etc. So this vehicle would then actually become a vital part for some of the units within the um, British military successfully completed a series of trials over two years in Norway, the UK, Sweden, and Oman. In Norway, the vehicle passed its winter deployment inside the Arctic Circle. By contrast, they were then transported to Oman and took part in Exercise Safe Soria 2, where full operational testing was carried out in very hot and dry desert conditions. So I actually ended up doing Safe Soria 3, I think it was, back in 2018 yeah 2018 it was the first safe career since what around the early 2000s back in Amman and I believe they now want to escalate and increase the exercises and the development of training in Amman and I have to say some of the terrain is very difficult some of it's just plat flame desert um, but other it is really undulating, very unforgiving, and quite hard to get across. We we struggled some areas with our CVRTs. Um, so if this got across it, then it is definitely a good vehicle. Norway, I've not been with the army, but I've been but with myself. But we all know cold, snow, ice, like very, very hard um, environment and terrain to train in and get across. So if it's past there, then we know it's doing well again. The Royal Marine Commandos, based in the UK, took delivery of the first batch of production Vikings in July of 2003. Following this, initial operating capability was achieved in 2005, and nice. final deliveries were in early 2006. The vehicle when I joined the Army. service with the UK Army in April of 2006. Later that year, the 33 vehicles were first operationally deployed with the Royal Marine Commandos in southern Afghanistan. The Viking has two linked tracked units, which are articulated vertically and horizontally for steering and maneuvering over rough terrain. All of these tracks move continuously, giving maximum tractive effort in all conditions. That's good. These track systems are supplied by Susi International of Quebec, Canada. The chassis is of armored steel construction, while the rounded edges and smooth contours help with minimizing the radar cross section. Viking's design allows for upgrades and for the installation of modular subsystems to suit specific operational requirements, such as add-on armor, a range of weapon mounts, load changers, and standard cargo platforms. The BVS-10 APC variant that was delivered to Austria features a 360-degree observation system that is with good. six infrared Come on. cameras and in displays to provide greater situational awareness. 
The front vehicle is used as a driver unit with two and a half square meters of internal space. Yeah, that's quite Behind bad. this is the rear of the vehicle with 10 square meters of cargo space that can be used to carry military personnel or equipment. This cabin can carry eight fully equipped Marines. Alternatively, it can hold a mortar section, a heavy machine gun section, yeah. or a fully equipped anti-tank detachment with Mylan anti-armor missiles and firing posts. Both of these cabins are fully air conditioned. <laughs> right, it says they're fully air conditioned. Whether that air conditioning works is another matter. Hopefully they always did. But I've been in many vehicles that are meant to have air conditioning and they don't work. But so far it's a brilliant vehicle. You're seeing it get through water, over mud, ice, all terrain. Viking is made up of steel armor plates, which give protection against 7.62 millimeter armor piercing rounds and okay. 152 millimeter artillery shell fragments from a range of more than 10 meters. The That's BZS pretty decent. is rated to protect against half kilo charged anti-personnel mines. The British version of the vehicle is also equipped with a mine protection kit and an armored cage. British crews are also usually armed with the SA-80 A2K carbine, a shortened version of the standard assault rifle designed for carrying within cramped compartments. A massive part of what makes the Viking so effective is its newly developed chassis, powertrain, and steering units that give it speed and comfort on the road and in terrain comparable with modern infantry fighting vehicles. The front part of the unit is equipped with a 5.9 liter inline six cylinder turbo diesel engine designed by Cummins that gives it 250 brake horsepower, nice. more than twice the power of the BV206 that it's based on. The maximum torque is 840 Newton meters wow. at 1600 RPM. The Allison MD3560 six forward plus one reverse speed automatic transmission has differentials and final drives on both the rear and front cabins. The suspension of the Viking is made of six small road wheels on each side of the chassis with no track return rollers. Only one idler wheel is mounted at the front. The suspension is the same for the front and rear vehicles. Steering I like is done okay. by hydraulic ramps <laughs> that articulate the front and rear cabs in response to the driver's commands. It doesn't require one track to be braked as in other tracked vehicles, which gives an advantage in increasing the vehicle's capabilities in all terrains like snow, sand, and soft ground. Yeah, it just seems to be good on all terrain. It looks like they're more rubber tracks than they are your standard sort of metal tracks with rubber plates inside that you have to replace when they wear away. Um, and, and considering the length of it, it's got more smaller wheels. So on a CVRT, you've got a sprocket, one, two, three, four, I think it's five wheels and then an idler at the back. And I think they said it had six on either. So it's, it seems like it's a smaller track, but with smaller wheels. And I wonder if that makes a difference. Despite a significant weight of 10 tons, the Viking maintains good mobility on soft terrain because the ground pressure is minimized by the even load distribution over the four tracks. We have more tracks, yeah. The tracks are 620 millimeter wide molded rubber with cord. Yeah, they are rubber, this for means so. the maximum ground pressure is about the same as that of the BV-206, a vehicle that's 8,800 pounds, or four tons, lighter. The vehicle also has the capability to retain mobility even if a track is damaged by a mine. Viking's speed on flat terrain is comparable to that of a modern infantry fighting vehicle. This is 31 miles per hour, or about 50 kilometers per hour, on level Class A roads, 22 miles per hour, and about 35 kilometers per hour on tracks, and 9 miles per hour, or 15 kilometers per hour, cross country. The range on metaled roads is 186 miles, or about 300 kilometers. It's not a long the range. Viking's ground clearance has been massively increased over that of its predecessor vehicles to improve cross-country capabilities. The Viking is also able to ford through water up to a depth of five feet, That's or deep. one and a half meters, without That's, that is very deep. for any preparation. It is fully amphibious, meaning that it's able to swim in deeper water with less than two minutes prep, including closing holes and fitting a front vane to prevent a bow wave from washing over the front windows. That's what gets me. This is what's impressive. This thing is amphibious. It, it's a boat, right? It's brilliant off-road. Off, off so it's, you know, whether you're in a, your, the Imani Desert, Afghan, Afghan Desert, 
Norway, Art Sweden, ice, snow, just standard roads in the UK, mud. And then within two minutes, you can put it in the water, um, which is obviously vital when selling it to the Marines. British Army, not so much. But because the Marines ended up taking order of these, and they are an amphibious unit, I think this is brilliant, and it's proven. Like within two minutes, you can just go, we're going in water. There's no way I'd put a CVRT in water like above a few foot because you know water's pretty much going to leak in because there's going to be an issue with a seal somewhere but there's two minutes off you go brilliant the speed of the vehicle when submerged is three miles per hour which is about five kilometers per hour the viking not very fast deployed though. from all royal marine landing craft right. and transported to the area of operations by c-130 hercules and c-17 globemaster planes also, if needed, the unladen Viking can be underslung and airlifted by an RAF Chinook helicopter. I was just about to say, this place can go everywhere and anywhere, but I bet it can't be air assaulted in through underslung. But there you go. Yes, it can. There's not no way your Royal Marines can't get in. Two sections in just 20 minutes to be carried by a Merlin helicopter. Although the vehicle hasn't been built for combat, it can defend itself if ambushed. The roof of the cabin for the front vehicle is fitted with a ring mount for a 12.7 millimeter Browning heavy machine gun. Discover the new Google Pixel 8, compatible with your other devices, whether they're or a 7.62 millimeter general purpose machine. Yeah, we have the GPMG on top. If more protection is needed, it is also equipped with two groups of four smoke grenade dischargers fitted mm. to the front of the vehicle on top of each front window. The driver or vehicle commander is able to activate these, which can fire smoke or white phosphorus grenades. The Viking has been subject to upgrades over the years. In 2009, the UK ordered 24 improved versions of the vehicle, known as the BVS-10 Viking Mark II, for around $36 million. This contract also included modifications such as fitting urgent operation equipment. The improvements included a larger and more powerful engine, more protection, a bigger alternator to generate more electrical power, yeah, plus to start upgraded it. brakes, suspension, and steering unit. Primarily, the vehicle is used by the Netherlands and British Armed Forces, but in December 2009, the French Army Procurement Agency ordered 53 of the upgraded Vikings for oh, their forces. Really? As of February 2019, BAE Systems had delivered the first four Vikings to the Austrian Armed Forces. Okay, this it's getting around. This follows their Army's order of 32 armored personnel carrier variants of the Viking. There are four main variants when it comes to the Viking. These are the Troop Carrying Variant, or TCV, with one crew plus 11 Marines. The Command Variant, or CV, carries two crew plus eight passengers. The rear cab on this one also has an enhanced digital communication center. Then there's the Repair and Recovery Variant, or RRV, with four specialist maintenance vehicle mechanics. For this version, the rear mounts a high ab crane, a full mobile workshop, an air compressor, and a nine tone capacity capstan winch. That's good. Together with hydraulic anchors. Fix you and anyway. Finally, there's the ambulance variant, yeah, which was trialed during operations in Afghanistan. What are your thoughts on the Viking? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get our latest videos straight to your notifications. So, brilliant video. Um, yeah, thank you, Military World. So, did it shock the world? Most probably, apart from the amphibious, I have to say that was um, pretty insane, actually, to know that it, within two minutes it can go fully amphibious. What I wanted to talk about here is... Where is it? The cage, he said. Um, I said it could be fitted with a cage. Basically, that is bar armor. Um, and it was brought in in Afghan and Iraq to prevent hits from RPGs. Um, and I'm not going to be able to find it now. Watch. How annoying. There we go. Right, so this. Ah! We can find it. There we go. This here, the cage around it, is bar armor. Um, that is bar armor. So an RPG comes in. RPG comes in, and basically, 
it then hits either the bar arm or in between the bar armor and stops a direct hit on the vehicle. Um, so that's what that is. And these were fitted to all modern vehicles. Um, the Mastiff, uh, the Jackal. Uh, I don't think they were on Jackal actually. Mastiff, Huskies. Um, whatever sort of main armoured vehicles were within the Afghan and Iraq, mainly Afghan, the CVRT too got fitted to them um, just to prevent direct hits from sort of like rockets, um, pro pro propelled grenades. Um, once again, I didn't think it was going to be airlifted, but it is. It could be coming in a C-130 Herc. You know, they can go in on their sort of MIBs, boats, personnel carriers and the Royal Marines use. You can be airlifted in with a Herc and even with a Merlin if you separate it into two pieces. Um, I think it's good. It, you know, it, it just reminds me of a smaller, um, you know, AFV, armoured fighting vehicle, sort of personnel carrier, APC. Um, but I have seen these around. I've never been in one, never used one, but I have seen the Marines when you've gone down to count their parks up or they've been driving around on a training area and they do get about, I think, yes, they get around in all sorts of areas like the Amani Desert, Afghan, Norway, Sweden, wherever it is, UK. I think it still has the same issues as the smaller sort of armoured vehicles like the CVIT is when it comes to big ditches, big holes, you've got to slow right down to either go through it or go around it as like a warrior or an Ajax sorry, a challenger on Ajax and sort of a warrior, but mainly the Chally and the Ajax, it just go over anything because it's so big. Um, because these are a lot smaller and this is in two, it most probably, you can go fast, but when you're on places like, I don't know, down Warminster training area, Brecon, Otterburn, there is a lot of ditches and holes and you really do struggle to get over them. And if you do hit them too fast, you end up uh, hurting someone really bad. Um, but other than that, they are very reliable. They've been proven and they're very good bits of kit. Uh, and it, and yeah, really good. So I think they're absolutely brilliant. Uh, and yeah, I really enjoyed the video. So make sure you go and check out Military World uh, for more. And make sure you like, subscribe and I'll see you soon.